Greetings and salutations loyal viewers of this channel, my name is Sean, and today I want to talk about a story out of Michigan that I found absolutely fascinating, because a woman, homeless woman, decided that she was going to take shelter in a sign at a, at a, at a like, grocery store. Yes, this, this woman lived there in, in that sign, and that's what I want to talk about today. But before we do, I want to thank everybody who signed up over at actualjusticeword.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you, give me the money, okay? Your support, greatly appreciated. It's not every day that you hear of someone living inside a store sign. That's what contractors found at this family fair store in Midland. Police say the woman was homeless, but in this small area, she had everything she needed. So right off the top, I gotta go into dispute mode with this NBC News segment because they open up by telling us that this woman was living in a family fair sign, and then they say the police told them that she was homeless. And you can't have it both ways. Either she was living in the sign, thus making it her home, because as we know, home is where the heart is, or she, she's homeless. You need to pick one, you absolute monsters over at NBC. And and yeah, I'm j we're gonna roll into the segment. R relax, everybody. It's just jokes, it's just comedy. How resourceful she was. Sarah Lynn Temple is the executive director at the nonprofit Midland's Open Door. She doesn't know this woman and wasn't aware of the situation until she read it in the newspaper. We never want to see someone break the law in order to have housing, but she was safe. You know, she wasn't living in a car that, that she could have been assaulted in. She wasn't living in the park. So I got to say right off the bat, when it comes to this woman who has the Midlands Open Door thing, which is a charity to help homeless people in Michigan, that uh, she's too excited about this. Now, me being excited about this, perfectly fine. That's okay. I'm a horrible person on the internet.com. But this lady is supposed to help the hobo. She's supposed to help the homeless. She hears about a story of a woman living in a sign. And she's like, wow, how resourceful of this particular woman. And that is just not the level of excitement I expect from her. However, it's definitely the level of excitement that you are going to get from me. Now, I have been scouring the internet.com looking for images of this makeshift shelter for all of you guys. Now, I am disappointed and a little bit heartbroken that I could not find said images. And believe me, I've been searching. That being said, I did find the written word which describes this, which I will read to you so you can get an idea of what was going on in this particular sign. So on April 23rd of this year, contractors discovered an extension cord on the roof of a building and were able to trace it to an enclosed area inside a sign. According to the Midland Police Department, there was a mini desk flooring, a pantry of food, and a houseplant in a makeshift residence. Police were notified that the woman was living in the sign. She was told that she needed to find somewhere else to live and that she was trespassing on the business, but no criminal charges were filed. Midland's Open Door provides housing for people who have lost their home. They can stay, we say, through to a solution. So as long as we're working through the different obstacles they have in their housing, employment, health care, etc., uh, they're welcome to stay with us. Temple says they are seeing more and more people having to figure out what to do for housing. Now, look, I, I got to be perfectly honest with everybody out there in the audience. I'm kind of on this woman's side, even though I'm against trespassing, even though I'm against squatting. But the fact of the matter is she put flooring in inside this sign. This woman was living relatively comfortably. And really, all she was doing was trespassing and stealing electricity. And she may have, although we don't have evidence of this, stolen a bunch of different various things. For all we know, this woman was working from her home, which of course, again, was this sign, but she didn't seem to be harming anyone. So honestly, even though you can't have it, I, I am kind of glad that they didn't charge her criminally. And honestly, this reminds me of one of those mastermind episodes where you had a military guy escape from prison and he ended up living in a stairwell in like an abandoned Toys R Us or an abandoned Best Buy next to a Toys R Us. And that's how he ended up starting off his life. And that guy had significant military training and was an escape prisoner. But this woman appeared to do this all on her own. On top of that, she doesn't appear to be a mother or anything thing like that. So kind of honestly, if we're being perfectly reasonable about our discussion on this particular case, a badass lady, like, like not, not going to lie. She's she very, very self-sufficient. I was told that the Whammons can't survive the zombie apocalypse, but she, she was doing a pretty good job. She, she installed flooring inside the sign. 
right now. We really would like to see people who are in need of shelter come in and ask for help. But we also acknowledge the fact that there's shame in that. And a lot of people don't realize that, especially here at the Open Door, we want to be that welcoming place. Now, look, the lady at this nonprofit, again, too much praise for this particular woman. And I'm just not about that. It's OK when I do it. Why? Because, number one, I'm absolutely a hypocrite when it comes to that. But two, because she's stealing my thunder, saying true things that I want to say, because there's actually more interesting components to this particular story. Now, like I said, I did compliment her resourcefulness. I also want to point out that unlike many of the other cases that we talk about where homeless people are mentally ill or they're drug addicted or they're alcoholics, this woman actually has a full time job. She legitimately just doesn't make enough, according to her, in order to afford housing, so she was kind of making do in a bad situation, and again, we'll talk about the issues with housing a little bit later in this video, but here's something that I find unbelievably interesting and compelling, because the police bust up this whole location based on the fact that the contractors found the extension cord, and of course, they offered to connect this woman, since they didn't charge her criminally, with homeless services in order to get her some kind of temporary shelter. But the thing is, this absolute badass declined. Not interested. He said, you know what? No. I, I, you, you go away. I have a full-time job. I don't need to go live in your homeless shelters. I'm just going to go find another sign, a bigger sign, because you know what? I worked really hard. I saved up my money, and a down payment on a bigger sign is probably in my future. Now, she didn't say all of those other different various parts, but it's actually kind of amazing that the store is offering to help her get her furniture, again, out of their sign. But as of right now, they can't really figure out the best way possible to do that. Quote, the woman does have a job, but not at Family Fair. The store said they would work with her to get her furniture, but there is no word on if they are still working on getting the furniture down. Family Fair's parent company, Spartan Nash, sent us this statement about the woman living in the store sign, saying in parts, quote, ensuring there's ample, safe, affordable housing continues to be a widespread issue nationwide that our community needs to partner in solving. Now, look, I do have to give credit to the family fair they're not going super hard on this 34 year old woman even though this story is absolutely crazy in my opinion but i also want to point out for everybody that it's kind of impressive that she was able to get her furniture in there cut a hole in this sign put in flooring build herself up this particular shelter especially when you consider that this is a michigan-based story now they might have found her in the spring they might have found her in april but essentially this woman was able to build up a shelter enough to the point where she could survive a Michigan weather and a Michigan early April, which is also pretty damn cold, inside a sign of a store. And her only source of energy appears to be the one extension cord that she was running from within the store to this particular shelter. Again, she was also holding down a job and she legitimately just could not afford a place to live, which is actually quite sad. Michigan has a housing shortage. Jim Shaftsma is the housing attorney at the Michigan Poverty Law Program. He says this story highlights an ever-growing problem, the lack of affordable housing. Homelessness is a housing problem that there's simply not housing available. The affordable housing shortage especially impacts people in the low-income bracket. And Shaftsma says that's what's causing this crisis. Solving it will cost money. I think that uh, some of that has to come from the federal government, from the state government, to uh, also, I think, combining that with easing some of the restrictions on the building of new housing. And Now, look, to be clear, this is a niche case where you have somebody who is working, holding down a full-time job, who is, in fact, homeless, that doesn't have all of the different various problems, at least as far as we know, associated with homeless people and is actually quite resourceful again in that that this woman was living in a sign completely undetected until contractors ended up discovering the extension cord that being said this whole idea that we need the federal government and the state government in order to spend this money in order to build housing is ridiculous and absurd and we've seen this experiment before and these housing units end up becoming ugly eyesores that are dens of criminality 
However, the last part that he added right there about easing restrictions on building is definitely what we need to do. Again, we see this time and time again. The most affordable metropolitan area in this country is Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas, not perfect in any regard, but it's the fourth largest city in the United States of America, one of the fastest growing cities in the United States of America. And guess what? It's one of the few cities that consistently has incomes outpacing the price of housing. Why? Because they have no zoning regulations. Dallas, Texas, again, that whole area has very little zoning regulations. And even though housing has gone up because so many people have moved to Texas, guess what? That area is relatively affordable compared to all these different comparable cities. The fact of the matter is the real secret is zoning and regulations and rules voted on by homeowners that are meant to keep their property values up by diminishing the overall supply of housing by preventing building or what's driving this crisis. If you're going to have the federal government come in, it should not be to build ugly eyesore projects like they did before that became absolutely disastrous in major metropolitan areas across this country it should be to kind of say you know what there's a limit to what you can do as homeowners, as residents, to vote against other people in the United States of America, future residents, citizens of this country, because essentially you're stripping them of their rights in order to maintain your property value through government power. Until we have that kind of attitude, that kind of mindset when it comes to zoning regulations, until we recognize that the heavy hand of the government is the major problem that we're experiencing, then we're going to get a lot more issues with housing, a lot more unaffordable housing, and this is going to create all kinds of different stresses across the economy. Now, as for this particular case, again, I want to point out how much of an outlier this woman actually is. Most homeless people have mental illnesses or drug addiction or some other problem that puts them on the street, including them choosing to be on the street. In this particular case, you have a woman with a full-time job. Obviously, she wants some kind of shelter. Maybe she is, to a certain extent, choosing to be on the street because she was offered services, not even arrested for this, but she refused them. But the fact of the matter is... This is not the norm. Somebody holding down a job, being consistent, being resourceful, being relatively sane, according to the reporting, is not what we're experiencing with homelessness. So while building up new housing stock will definitely help everyday average Americans that are working, the fact of the matter is a lot of these people need different kinds of care. And one of those things is to not be allowed to be absolutely insane on the streets of the United States of America because we're so addicted to respecting the freedom of people who cannot care for themselves. We have to change that standard from the idea that you have to be a danger to yourself or other people for you to be put in some kind of asylum to something more in the middle from what we had before. So that way we can get these people who can't care for themselves off the streets. Now, honestly, I didn't think I was going to actually inject this much meaning into this particular story because I just want to say it's a pretty damn cool story. Again, woman living inside a sign of a grocery store, added some flooring, surviving the winter, all these other crazy things. And honestly, maybe, just maybe, because this woman went into a little bit of a hibernation period, that's why most women pick the bear over the man. I'm not saying anything, I'm just saying. Now, of course, I wanna open up the floor to all of you guys out there in the audience. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. And as usual, if you like the video, you show me by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social medias, support me via the support links in the description of this video this has been me talking about a crazy story out of michigan till next time